This guy here, Jason Thornburg, Fort Worth, Texas. Back in September, he was accused of killing and dismembering three people before setting them ablaze in a dumpster and told the police he did it because he had an in-depth knowledge of the Bible and believed he was being called to commit sacrifices, according to his arrest warrant. Why Why are these people, people need to stop playing with God like this. The arrest warrant says, Before me, the undersigned authority on this day personally appeared the undersigned affiant, who, after being duly sworn, in, sworn on oath, deposes and says, My name is Detective M. Barron of the Fort Worth Police Department, and I have good reason to believe and do believe that on or about the 21st day of September of 2021 in Tarrant County, Texas, Jason Allen Thornburg did then and there intentionally cause the death of individuals identified as David Lureris and two additional per persons tentatively identified, and their name has been their names have been redacted, but they were both women by cutting their throats and dismembering their bodies. These murders were co committed pursuant to the same scheme or course of conduct during different criminal transactions. This offense did occur in Fort Worth, Tarrant County, Texas. On September 22nd of 2021, at approximately 0617 hours, Fort Worth Fire Department was called about a fire in a dumpster located at 3120 Bonnie Drive, Tarrant County, Texas. When the firefighters arrived on scene and put, the fire, put out the fire, they discovered inside the dumpster human remains that had been mutilated into multiple pieces. Officers J. Minter and A. Aguileta were dispatched to the scene and notified on-call homicide detective M. Barron that there appeared to be at least two bodies in the dumpster. Due to the nature of this offense, multiple assisting homicide detectives and other detectives from digital forensic units were called to assist in locating any surveillance videos related to the offense. Medical investigators Amy Renfro and Steve White processed the remains from the, from the dumpster and were able to ascertain there were, were to be at least three bodies. The dumpster appeared to have been recently emptied as there was little else found in the dumpster besides human remains. Detective Barron would later be notified by the medical examiner's office that not all of the remains were accounted for, but the remains appeared to belong to an adult male, a young adult or teenage female, and a possible child of unknown sex. Detective Barron has since been notified that their deaths were caused by homicidal violence, but have yet to determine the exact instrument that caused their death due to the mutilation of the bodies. And it wasn't a child. They later determined that it was a small adult female. Identification of the remains is still ongoing and is extremely time-consuming due to the burned and dismembered condition. A portion of a large tattoo was visible on the section of a back that was discerned to be letters U-E-R-A-S in large print. Detectives were able to use a partial name search to locate a possible last name of Lueras and located several Facebook pages for David Lueras, a Hispanic male born October 29, 1978. Lueras had a photo on his back and shoulder tattoos on one of his accounts 
that exactly matches the tattoo found on the remains. Luaris was also described as having a penis implant that would that was discovered during the examination of the remains at the medical examiner's office. The female and possible child have not yet fully been identified. Detectives from the Digital Forensics Unit were able to obtain surveillance video from across the street of the dumpster that showed a dark-colored SUV pull up and park next to the dumpster at about 20 to 50 hours on 9-21-21. The sole occupant, who appears to be male, exits the driver's seat and appears to make multiple trips to, from the trunk to the dumpster. He appears to take containers from the back of the vehicle and dump their contents into the dumpster before putting the containers back in his vehicle. The SUV leaves minutes later but returns at 050 hours on 92121. The driver gets out again and makes multiple trips to the dumpster to in- empty the contents of his container into the dumpster. He then p- places a single unknown item into the dumpster just before turning his vehicle around and returning to the, du- to the dumpster to ignite the unknown device substance, which starts a large visible fire second la- seconds later. The SUV is then driven away southbound and out of view. Detectives were able to locate multiple surveillance videos in the immediate area that showed the SUV traveling to and from the dumpster each time. Those videos allowed the detectives to determine the SUV to be a black Jeep Cherokee in the 2005-2010 range with chrome accents, roof rack, and chrome rims. On 9-27-2021, homicide detectives were going through a list of 2005 to 2010 Jeep Cherokees registered in the Tarrant County, in Tarrant County, when Detective K. Sullivan located a black 2008 Jeep Cherokee with unique-looking chrome rims that appeared to match the SUV in the surveillance videos, and bearing a temporary tag. This vehicle is re- registered to Jason Allen Thornburg an American Indian male born 8-27-1980, who detectives had recently investigated for the suspicious death of his roommate on 5-21-21 during a gas explosion in their homes minutes after Jason left for work. Due to the explosion, the medical examiner's office was unable to determine the matter of death. Detective Sullivan contacted Motor Company, the name of the motor company is redacted, which is the lien holder for for Thornburg's Jeep and found the vehicle is affixed with a GPS locator that pings sporadically. Detective Sullivan was advised the Jeep was currently located at, and that address has been redacted, in Arlington and went to that location to view the vehicle. Detective Sullivan found Thornsburg's Jeep and found the details on that Jeep to match the SUV seen in surveillance videos, dumping items into the dumpster before setting them on fire. Detective Sullivan was also provided with historical location data for Thornsburg's Jeep and was told it was repeatedly shown to be located at 1451 West Euless Boulevard in Euless, Tarrant County, Texas, which is the address for the Mid-City Inn. Detective P. Vega went to the Mid-City Inn and verified with the manager that Jason Thornburg had been the sole registered occupant for room 113 since 728 of 2021. Detective Vega was shown the motel surveillance video from the night the remains were put in the dumpster and did observe the male occupant of room 113 take several large containers from the motel room and place them in the back of a black Jeep Grand Cherokee while wearing what appears to be a full body suit, which is worn in jobs that involve drywall, 
painting, or hazmat cleaning situations. The mail leaves the motel in the Jeep at 20, 20, 22, 24 hours on 2-21-21, returns to load and returns to load another load of containers into the back of the Jeep before leaving again at 026 hours on 22121. The mail returns again at 0128 hours and takes the containers from the back of the Jeep and puts them back in the motel room. These times and distance to the dumpster site coincide with the times the mail in the Jeep on video is emptying containers into the dumpster. Detective Vega spoke with, and that name has been redacted, who is a resident of room, and that number has been redacted, which is one of the rooms above 113. This person told Detective Vega that he had seen an additional male that had been staying in room 113 for two or three days last week. Detective Vega showed this person, a photograph of David Luares, and this person confirmed that's who he saw, saw staying in room 113. He told Detective Vega that he had also seen a woman recently staying in room 113 that went by, and her name has been redacted, and had reddish blonde hair but does not remember seeing a kid. On 9-27 of 2021... At approximately 18 hours, 1800 hours, detectives M. Barron, K. Sullivan, and M. Anderson located Jason Thornburg at the address of, and that address has been redacted, in Arlington, Texas, where he was performing electrical work. Thornburg agreed to come to the homicide office and speak with detectives. He provided the following summary of information. Can you imagine those people that hired him? He was probably at a customer's house. And them seeing the news later on that that's what he was wanted for. Never trust people, service people that come to your house. Keep an eye on them at all time. Thornburg described having an in-depth knowledge of the Bible and believed that he was being called to commit sacrifices. Thornburg said that David had shown up at his motel approximately five days prior to the bodies being discovered. David had stayed with him in his motel room. Thornburg believed that David needed to be sacrificed. He sliced David's throat and cut him into pieces in the bathtub. Thornburg initially hid the remains in his room in, a, in trash bags before obtaining Rubbermaid-type tubs to store them in. Approximately two days later, a female he knows as, and the name's been redacted, showed up at his motel. He described her as being a very small Hispanic female. Thornburg said that he sacrificed her as well by cutting her throat and dismembering her body and also storing her remains in the storage tubs. Now, this is in a motel room. Did, not, did nobody hear these people scream? Did nobody... Well, it's probably a shady motel. They probably hear that stuff all the time. Or, I don't know. I don't know how he was able to pull this off and nobody be able to hear anything. Two days later, an additional female came to his motel. He knew her as, and the name redacted, Thornburg described initially trying to stab her, but said that he ultimately had to strangle her. Now, there was a fight. Nobody heard this stuff going on. You know that hotel probably doesn't have very thick walls, but again, it's probably a shady place, and they're used to hearing things like that, so nobody paid attention. He cut her body in pieces and also stored her remains in the tubs. Thornburg said that he used what he described as a Milwaukee brand, brand straight blade knife to dismember the bodies. A box for a Mil Milwaukee brand knife was located at the motel room during the execution of a search warrant. Prior to concluding the interview, Detectives Barron and O'Brien asked Thornburg if he also made a sacrifice regarding the death of, name redacted, who was killed in the suspicious fire earlier this year in Fort Worth. Thornburg said that he had sacrificed this person by slicing his throat. He then uncapped the natural gas line and 
lit a candle in the room. The uncapped gas line and candle were located at the crime scene. Detectives asked if there had been any additional sacrifices, and he responded that he had sacrificed the body of his girlfriend in Arizona. He identified her as name redacted. A records, records check revealed that she is an American Indian female reported missing from, and that's redacted. Your affidavit has reason to believe and does believe that Jason Allen Thornburg knowingly and intentionally committed the offense of capital murder of multiple persons. Wherefore, I request an arrest warrant issued for the suspect herein be de designated according to the laws of the state. They are seeking the death penalty for him, which I believe is... Just in this case, apparently this guy is not right in the head. And I don't know why these people keep blaming God and telling them, you know, saying that God wants them to sacrifice somebody. I just, I think it's demon possession, just straight up demon possession. Anyhow, this is all I have on this for now. Uh, please don't forget to like and hit that subscribe button and y'all have a good day.